Hello, this is Neil from iPaintGirls.com, and in this tutorial we're going to be drawing without actually having to draw a PSP, which means you can actually use your mouse. You don't have to, you know, you don't need anything but a regular mouse. The techniques that you'll learn in this process are universal and are general, so you can use them to draw virtually anything that's non-organic. You can even use them to draw organic things, but it, I don't know, it's a, it's a different style for organic things. Anyway, first thing we need to do is get the general dimensions right. So I have a, a picture of a PSP on my document here. I'm going to turn the that layer down a bit, make a new layer on top of it. This is just so I get a, a general idea of the dimensions correct because it can be kind of difficult sometimes to get them correct when you're just eyeballing them. Of course you can go through all the trouble of measuring and stuff, but why do all that when there's no need? So I'm using the rectangle marquee tool. You draw a rectangle. Um, if you don't know how to do that then you know get my tutorial on how to use stuff or you know, start learning how to use Photoshop because that's this is the most basic stuff. Now go to select and then go to inverse. Uh, my bad. What am I doing? Go to select and go to transform selection. And I just want to pull this top one down a bit so where it's flush with the top there. Pull this where it's flush with the left. So all corners are flush now, and that's the general size of the shape we need. Then I'm going to go to my paint tool here, my paint bucket fill tool. Pick the 90% gray, and I'm going to fill this in. Right. So now that now that I have the general uh, dimensions correct, everything else will work out nicely. Then I'm going to go to View, make sure X rows, rulers, and snap is on. Left click inside of the ruler here and drag out a, um, uh, I don't know, I guess a guide line. It'll snap to the center if you have snap on, to the center of the shape because that's the layer I'm on. I'm going to pull another one out somewhere around here. Then I'm going to grab this, um, well, actually, no, I don't even need to do this technically, but it is good to know how to do this. So I'm going to grab this, damn, okay, let's grab the circle one here, make it just a shape that's something like this, kind of center it like so, grab, it, it'll snap into the center, transform selection, and I, I want to bring the edges, um, I'm going to pull it over here more actually, and basically I want the edges both to match and touch the corners here, so I'm going to pull this down until its edge matches. Now I have the same exact amount on top and bottom. This will give me a perfect circle shape that I need. However, I want to actually see and make sure it matches the circle shape of the actual um, thing itself, of the PSP. Notice it's off a little bit, so it's not quite perfect. Go to Select and Transform Selection, and we'll pull this over until it kind of you know matches like that. So now it's matching. Click OK. Go back to the shape here pick the rectangle marquee tool again, hold down the shift key. Notice the icon changes to a plus sign. Not just a plus sign, but a plus sign with a plus next to it. Hold down the alt key. Notice now it's a plus sign with a minus sign. That means you're going to subtract from the marquee. This means you'll add from it. So hold down the shift key, left mouse click, and drag out so we can add to this marquee. Bam, like so. Then we'll go to select and we'll inverse, and then hit delete on the keyboard, and it gets rid of the edge that we don't need. Right, so now we're almost, you know, we're, we're starting to get there. And what we're going to do is this cool technique where we'll just do one edge and then we can just duplicate and do all the other edges. It's, it's pretty cool. Easy to do. I'm going to turn down this a bit too for I can see the underlining part there. Use the pen tool. Zoom in. <coughs> Excuse me. So left click outside the shape. Hold down the shift key. Make another click inside this part here because we're going to be doing... Um, Notice that makes a straight line because I have the shift key down. Let go of the shift key and click up here, click, and then connect these by clicking inside that square. Left click here, hold down, go to convert point tool. First click once to highlight the, the shape and then click inside here again after the icon changes. It'll put a little white dot. That means we can adjust that. I'm going to move just the right side. I'm going to keep this one straight so the line stays straight. I'm just going to move this one out a little bit like so. And I'm going to click here and see if I can get that like so. Grab the black path selection tool here where I can move this whole thing over. And what I need to do is I need to figure out how to get that to go like that. So I'm going to then grab the direction tool, left click this one once, oops, left click outside, and then left click this once, and this will allow me to drag just this piece and nothing else, like so. Go back to the black path tool, move this whole thing over again, and that's pretty darn close to what I need it to be. If you want, you could, you know, mess with this again, 
and try to get it as perfect as you can, like so. But you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but you know, that's close enough. Right click on this and choose Make Selection. Hit Delete on the keyboard. Right, so now all we have to do is to take this shape we have. I'm going to turn the opacity up a little bit here again. And we're gonna we're gonna quarter it basically and copy and paste. So first thing I do, I need this top half. So if I just use the marquee tool and go down here, it'll snap to the center like that. Then I'm gonna edit, copy, edit, and paste. Before I do anything else, I want to go back to that other layer I had. Use my marquee tool, and I'm gonna bring it up to the center here and hit delete on the keyboard. That way, I just have that top part. Go back to this new layer I just made, edit, transform, and I'm gonna go vertical. I'm going to bring this up. It'll snap. It should snap right into place like that because I have snapping on. So now I have that side done. Then I'm going to merge these two together by going to here, click on this little icon, and then go to merge down. It'll merge with that layer. So now I have that on one layer. The next thing I need to do now is make another center line in the center here. Bam, it snaps into place in the center. And I can go ahead and delete this half. That's gone. Now I just have this half. I'm going to drag it down to this icon here, left mouse click and then drag it down, it makes a copy of the of that of that piece. I'm going to now um, choose transform flip horizontal, drag it over here, it should snap into place like so. Click here and merge down once more and now I have the whole shape done. Saved a lot of time, you don't have to you know do that same step over and over again. So once I'm here and I have the you know I have the basic shapes I need, I need to make this button shape here. I could use the pen tool to do that. There's, there's a couple different ways you can do it actually. Um, but pen tool will probably be the easiest way to actually make that button. Once we make the button, we can flip it over to the other side. So I'm just going to click here, click here, click here, click down here. It's going to go underneath, so it doesn't matter that it's going to be bigger. And I just need to pull this side a little bit like so, and that, that piece is pretty much finished. Right click make selection. For now I'm just going to fill it in with a lighter gray color. Working with solid, solid, oops, I need to make a new layer. Put this one underneath, just left click and drag it until you see the line, let go, fill that in. Okay, so now I have that button. I'm going to copy it by left clicking, drag it down here, edit, transform, flip horizontal, drag it over here, and voila, now we got our two little shoulder buttons. This piece down here will just be a modified version of that. And I don't, I don't know if this is on both sides or not. In the, in the photo it's not, but maybe it actually is there in real life. Make one more copy of that button. Bring it over here. I'm going to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Edit, transform, and flip vertical. Bring it to where it snaps into place. Turn down the opacity a bit so you can see what you're doing. And you can make that with the pen tool as well. It'd probably be the easiest way to do this piece. Click once here, once here, once here. I'm actually going to click here and here for that because it's just easier. And probably once like that, that should work. Using the converter pen tool, zoom way in. Start to move these pieces around until you get somewhat of the shape. I'm, I probably need to grab this one now and make it straight like that. I just need to pull this one a little bit, and that should work. Edit. Um, where is that? Make selection. Delete on the keyboard. Now we have that shape there. I'm going to turn the opacity back up on that. I'm going to go ahead and, and select these three layers by holding down the shift key and then clicking the bottom layer. So click the top one and the bottom one while holding down the shift key. It selects all of them. And then we'll go ahead and merge merge those layers. It just merges layers you have selected. Right, so as you can see, we're making progress. We have the, the basic shape of the PSP all laid out for us. And now it's just a matter of adding all the details, which we'll get into. Notice that there's slight bevel edges around the edge here, so it's not a perfect square. And we want to we want to go ahead and cut that out for our screen. So I'm going to use this um, rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to set it to this up here in the settings. Click on that icon there. Let's see what that looks like. Nope, that's way too round to just hit back. Let's go and make this um, 
0 0.1, 0 0.1, let's see what that looks like. And that looks like that'll work out. So now I'm just going to click on the corner here, drag it down to somewhere around here, and bam. So now we have the screen shape. And right now all I want is that shape, so I'm going to go ahead and um, use, let's see, the, the easiest way to do this will probably be to first turn this off, and I just want that exact color right there. So I could have changed the color to make it easier to select, but let's see what happens if I You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to redraw it with a different color. Because I want to show this. This is, I think this is an important thing to learn how to do, so it's a good general rule. Just repeat that same step again. Different color this time. So now when I go to select color range, and I select this color range, it just selects that image. And this gives a nice, perfect, smooth line. It's better than using this tool here. That, you, know, you could use that, but it's going to give more ragged edges. So this will give nice, smooth edges. I'm going to go back to this layer here and I'm going to delete so now I have the place where my screen will fit underneath there view actual pixels so now we can see that everything's starting to come together I'm going to keep this shape just in case I need it again um, for later and you, you, you'll see why when we have to do different like edges and stuff like that alright so I forgot to turn this layer back up to 100% opacity so now you can see what it what we're at now. Now we need to start adding in the shadow highlights to all this before we add the next buttons on. We'll go ahead and make this look three dimensional, and then we'll add the buttons to it. All right. So I don't know if we have enough time in this video to really uh, do much more, but we'll see what, how far we can get, and then we'll go to part two. So um, what I'm going to do is this shape here. Is I'm going to select it by doing that. I'm going to hold down the control key and left click in this little icon on the layer, and that brings up the marquee for that particular shape. Go to select and we're going to transform selection. I'm going to bring this in a little bit to about like here and do that on both sides. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, and actually not that far in, is because you'll notice that um, there's this like black part. And I'm probably at this stage, I'm going to turn off extras for now. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK to. Okay, what just happened to my selection? Now it's not showing up. All right, so anyway, I'm going to just pull on the edges here a little bit. Not much. That part's going to be like almost all the way black. And then um, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. I'm going to have to uh, zoom in here if I can get this right. Just a little bit like that. Then what I'm going to do is hit OK, and I'm going to grab this tool now, and I'm going to add by holding down the shift key. I need to add to the selection. I need to add that part there and add in this part here. Also this whole top part actually. I need to add that in there like so. Now I'm going to go to select and inverse and then I'm going to go to image adjustments brightness and contrast. I want to turn this to where it's black like so. Because you'll notice uh, when you're using this uh, particular lighting from the top, that part kind of rolls back over and becomes dark. This part down here, I'm not really worried about so much yet, but I could have um, also added that selection. So let's go ahead and do that then, I guess. I'm going to go back to here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just undo because I messed up. I forgot to hold down the shift key. I just need to add that piece and this piece down here. And not like that. I'm, I need to subtract, sorry, because I have it inversed. Okay. Now I can go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and make that black. And voila. At this point, you know, you want to save every so often. So you might want to save now as we continue to move on and make this 3D. The next thing I'm going to do is go back and select this again, um, or rather, I'm going to go to um, Layer, no, uh, Select, Color Range, I'm going to choose this gray area, so now it will only select the gray rather than the black part. I'm going to use a gradient tool, and I'm not worried about this bottom part yet, you want to think about lighting and, and layers, in the same way you think about making shapes and layers, it's a whole new way of thinking, you want to make lighting and layers, so I'm not going to worry about this whole bottom part because it's, it's lighted differently because it has kind of a circle-ish shape to it 
like a part you know part cylinder shape running out of time here so I'm not gonna have enough time really to go into more but I'm gonna make this color a little bit uh, grayer or lighter drag by left clicking and pulling this up and then we'll do it the opposite way I'm on the wrong thing I need to click this one try that again and something about like so will probably work for now and I might actually add a little bit more lightness to the top but we'll just go ahead and do this for now and we'll come back with part two of how to draw without having to draw, you know, that is being able to use the mouse to draw stuff. And we'll add more lighting to this, and you'll see how it starts to really take shape. It's really cool looking. Okay, so come back for the next one.